A warm welcome to the newsroom. I am Fidelia Agunja. President Muhammadu Buhari has called for a thorough investigation into the growing reports of rape across the country. In a tweet published on Tuesday, the president condoled with the family of Owaila Omozua, a UNIVEN student who was raped in a church in Edo State. The president also charged the police to ensure the culprits are brought to justice. Meanwhile, national leader of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Tinubu, has also lent his voice to calls for justice over the increasing number of rape and abuse cases across the country. Tinubu took to Twitter, uh, rising in solidarity with all women decrying the unjust treatment that have been unleashed on the female gender over the years. No fewer than five rape cases have been reported across the country in the past one week, the most recent being that of an 18-year-old student of the Federal College of Animal Health and Production, Barakat Velo, who was gang-raped and murdered in Ibadan, the Oyo State capital. To security matters now, at least nine people have been killed and many others injured following an attack on Avong Doka village in Kajuru local government area of Kaduna State by suspected bandits. The latest incident comes barely one week after gunmen burnt down several houses at a rural grazing area settlement in Agwala Duse village, also in Kajuru local government area. Although the police authorities in Kaduna are yet to confirm their attack, As we have the always chairman done. of Kajuru local government area uh, said the gunmen invaded the village in the early hours of Wednesday and started shooting sporadically, thereby forcing residents to scamper for safety. He adds that nine people died on the spot as a result of gunshot wounds, while many others sustained injuries and have been taken to the hospital for treatment. The National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Adams Oshomole, says the party's National Working Committee has approved direct primary election to choose its governorship candidate for the Edo election. Oshomole said that shortly after meeting with some governors of the party in a closed-door meeting that lasted more than three hours on Tuesday. As we have always done, uh, internal issues of the party which are basically to explore ways and means of strengthening the party and ensuring that we continue to remain the most favored party uh, in Nigeria. And we had a very, very, very helpful conversation. Um, you know, it is one APC, there, is, there are no two APC. So, interacting and interfacing with our governors uh, is something that will be part of our tradition. It is not something we have just invented. And today, one was particularly, particularly helpful. The NWC had approved direct primaries for Edo. That of Undo has not been discussed because that will come much, much later. Say one by one, because uh, uh, Edo will come about three weeks before Undo election. And we, we have commenced the sale of forms. Uh, I think as of last Friday, to my knowledge, three people had uh, picked the form. I think by today I hear more people have picked forms. And this is a meeting with the national leadership of our party to discuss issues as is common between governors, forum, and party leadership uh, that will progress our party. Uh, of course, uh, you spoke about Odo, Edo and Odo elections. The Independent National Electoral Commission has rolled out a timetable but the party chairman is more appropriate to speak to, to you on what the party is doing to ensure that we comply, especially in a COVID-compliant manner with the timetable of uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission. Meanwhile, the National Working Committee of the All Progressives Congress, APC, has denied the claim that it endures the second-term bid of the Ondo State Governor, Rotimi Akiridolu. Akiridolu, who is believed to have a party relationship with the party's national chairman, Adams Oshomole, and party leader, Bola Tinubu, was among the APC governors that had a meeting with members of the NWC 
at the party's national secretariat in Abuja. The NWC last week adopted a direct method of primaries, a decision some political analysts believe may not end in favor of the two governors seeking re-election tickets amid the internal wrangle in the state chapters of the APC. Both governors are believed to prefer indirect primaries that would involve voting by delegates, which would include the governor's appointees like commissioners and advisors. They have, however, said they will win the primaries no matter the method used. We'll take a break here to bring you more stories. Don't go away. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. It's true. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that silly lies. And hey, wait, do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Mm. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amount funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the Go To app. If you want to know how our Commonwealth is being expanded by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, mm, that is true. <laughs> oh, I told you. On Deji 360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. The constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. Why we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need okay. to make informed judgments so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason oh. why this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that uh, family. Really? DG 360, providing clarity to issues. Welcome back. A look at the COVID-19 pandemic. A second person has died of COVID-19 in Bayelsa State. Director of Public Health and the State Ministry of Health and member of the Bayelsa State COVID-19 Tax Force announced this on Wednesday. Stowe described the victim as a middle-aged Bayelsan who was presented a week ago while critically ill at one of the public hospitals. He said a victim name unknown also had symptoms suggestive of kidney disease and had been managed as such and even had some sessions of dialysis. The victim was due for a final dialysis session on Monday, June 1st, before he passed away on Sunday, May 31st. Stowe also disclosed that further clinical investigations revealed he also had signs suggestive of a possible COVID-19 infection. Paul Nigeria has recorded 241 coronavirus cases. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, announced this in a tweet on Tuesday, saying that the fresh cases brings the total COVID-19 tally in the country to 10,819. The new cases were recorded in Lagos with 142, Oyo with 15, FCT with 13, Kano with 12 new cases, amongst others. On Monday, the NCDC had reported 416 new cases, with Lagos accounting for 192. The NCDC added that 3,239 patients have been discharged, while 314 deaths have been recorded so far. Well, Lagos State is considering different options in its bid to reopen schools. The Lagos State Commissioner for Education, Olashade Adefisayo, said this at the annual ministerial press briefing of the State Ministry of Education on Tuesday. Adefisayo said although the federal government would decide when schools would open, the state was putting measures in place to protect pupils. She added that there must be protocols that will address schools with large gatherings, so they were considering asking the pupils to come to school on different days to avoid crowds. 
The commissioner says the Ministry of Education is working with development partners to arrive at a paper protocol which will be shared when approved within a few days. This PTF school can say schools remain closed. So really I cannot give you a date for when schools will remain closed. That is clear. But um, we are working, they too are working with us, with uh, uh, development partners, uh, ministries of education across the country to come up with a series of protocols for how we will be able to manage when we open schools. So we are working behind this. We have a whole paper on the protocol. We are going to also maintain social distance, the normal social distance. And I've mentioned, like I said, that we will spread the children across the world. What we are looking at is not everybody comes in every day. So when we do that, then we will maintain the normal social distance as given out in the rules. For private schools, we regulate them. That is, when they want to set up a private school, they come to us, we register, we regulate. And we did say that we are rethinking the guidelines because it was very difficult before to regulate, to approve them because the guidelines are quite onerous. So we have been working with them as well in re going and redoing the guidelines that's number one and the other thing we agreed is that we will we would register more and more each year so that there are fewer and fewer schools off the radar because there are many schools that are not registered and so we have set up a concerted plan to continue to register them and i think uh, that, that we we work together all these things are done with them not by us alone whether we prepare the guidelines they are part of it whether we look at the regulations they are part of it even the protocols for opening they will be part of it. And to business matters, the Central Bank of Nigeria has revealed that the Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index PMI in the month of May recorded a decline of 42.4 index points after a 36-month consecutive expansion. The APEC Bank revealed this in its survey for May 2020 PMI. The survey showed that the production level index for the manufacturing sector also it declined in May 2020 after 37 consecutive months of growth. The employment level index for May 2020 stood at 24.5 points, indicating a decline in employment level for the second month. On the foreign scene, Lesotho's former first lady, Mazaya Tabin, has been arrested over the murder of the previous wife of her husband and former prime minister, Thomas Tabin. Lesotho's appeal court revoked her bill last week on suspicion that procedure was not followed correctly when her bail was granted. Tabin was transported to court where she wore a fur coat and black protective anti-coronavirus mask. The date for a new bail application was set for June 6. Isaiah Tabin has been charged with ordering the killing of Lipolelo Tabin, her love, her love rival, who was shot dead near her home in Lesotho's capital, Missouri, in June 2017. Mazaya Thaben was released on bail in February. The polo was estranged from Thomas Thaben at the time of the murder. And to sport, World Soccer governing body FIFA has joined sports leagues, teams and players around the globe to express solidarity amid outrage over the death of George Floyd, an unarmed black man killed in police custody in the U.S. The National Football League, National Hockey League and National Basketball Association have put out statements about the racial injustice that sparked protests across the U.S., but Major League Baseball has yet to make an official statement. Across those leagues, the loudest support has come from the players, including Los Angeles Lakers' LeBron James, New Jersey's Devils defenseman P.K. Subban, Kansas City Chiefs' four bowling-winning quarterback Patrick Mahomes, and New York Yankees slugger Giancarlo Stanton. And that's the latest from the newsroom at this time. We'll bring you more details later. Don't go away.